Hello everyone and welcome to Basic Electricity Tools Theory and Practice. Um, if you're watching this live, welcome to the stream tonight. If you're watching this in a replay, thank you very much for watching. So what I'm going to do tonight, um, as, and as you guys normally know, I do uh, gaming videos and streams and stuff like that. However, one thing that is common amongst all video games and electronics to begin with is the use of electricity. Now. I'm not going to um, go terribly exhaustive with this. What I am going to do is I'm going to try to teach you how to do basic home electricity. Um, by the time you're done, you um, fortunately this will be uh, recorded and uh, posted so you can go back to this video and watch it over and over and over again and you can get to the parts that you need to um, maybe be able to do some things yourself if you have... Um, like you want to change out an electrical outlet uh, plug in your house, for instance. I'm going to be teaching you how to do that tonight <clears throat> in this video. So um, without further ado, let's get into it. Um, if you uh, like gaming videos or you like stuff like this, then um, hit that subscribe button. And there's tons of videos in the works and they'll be coming to you soon. <clears throat> so to begin with, um, as you can see right here, I have a whiteboard and I'm going to be using this as a visual aid um, along with a few other things to um, help in the process of teaching what I have to say tonight. <clears throat> so the, the definition of electricity is essentially movement of electrons. Now, I'm gonna have to move the camera around a little bit because I, uh, I need basically an easel um, for this, um, and I don't have one, so we're going to have to kind of just look at it while it's sitting on the ground. So, we will turn the camera and look down. Try to get it just right. Oops, wrong way. There we go. <laughs> Learning my left and my right tonight. Alrighty, so um, I'm taking this to a very, very atomic level and so that people can better understand why electricity moves the way that it does. So here you have an atom. Um, this is just a random atom that I drew um, just to get the point across. Um, just think of this as some sort of metal, okay? Uh, gold, silver, titanium, um, steel, iron, any, any of those uh, metals that you can think of that are really, really conductive. <clears throat> and, and again, I'm not going to get too far into this because there's other um, factors that go into it. But let's just go with the basics. So um, every element has, every atom of an element has an outside ring of electrons and in, in the electron cloud. And that outside layer, the outside ring, has what's called valence electrons. Now, valence electrons, not really um, important to, under, to remember that it's called a valence electron, but that's what it's called. Um, they are free electrons and they are very excited to move wherever they need to go. Um, and whenever these electrons move from one atom to another of, let's, we'll call this steel. This is not actually steel, but we'll call it, you know what? Um, we'll call it copper, since copper is mainly used in um, in electrical applications. So let's let's suppose that this is copper. It's um, you have the valence electrons right here, and these electrons are happy, very happy to move on. So they go from atom to atom to atom to atom to atom. All right, and um, the the movement of the electrons from atom to atom is called electricity. And um, we'll break it down a little bit more and call it current. The, the, the amount of electrons moving is called your current. Now, if there is a potential for these electrons to move, you have some sort of charge. You have a positive charge over here, and then you have a negative charge over here. These electrons are going, excuse me, a negative, a negative charge over here and a positive charge over here. The, um, the electrons are going to move over this way because they move from a, a negative charge to a positive charge to, to try and equalize the charge of the two so they'll be the same. So 
we'll suppose this atom over here has one, one um, at one electron over here. This has three, so this is the negative charge. This is the positive charge. Okay. I kind of drew this stuff and wasn't planning on doing this, but we'll go with the example. So if there is a conductive path between here and here, these electrons are going to move and so on and so forth down the line of a conductive material, copper, steel, wh whatever the case is. Now, um, you have the potential. This is negative. This is positive. That's the potential difference. And that is what is known as the voltage. And as I said a second ago, the actual amount of electrons moving over is your current. Now, if you were to um, if you were to put some sort, let's say, from here to here, there was some sort of um, like a light bulb or something. That's actually the symbol for resistance. Let's say this is a light bulb, and you have two wires. You put um, a light bulb in, in between them. Then you have a load or um, a coil of wire which builds up resistance. Resistance is the antithesis to voltage. It's the exact opposite. It's trying to stop the voltage. Okay. <clears throat> so um, I said all that to kind of give you a basic understanding of how electricity moves. Um, so electricity, like I said, moves from negative to positive. You have a potential difference. And the actual amount, we'll call it E, and I'll tell you why E in just a minute. But you have an electromotive force. So something is pulling or pushing those electrons over from one atom to another and on down the line. So you have an electromotive force. Then the current, uh, is, we'll call it A. We'll use this in a math equation in just a minute. Not this one, but one that leads to that. Okay. So you have um, your, your voltage or electromotive force. You have your current, which is measured in amps. And you can also think of the A here as amount. The amount of electrons that are moving is your amperage. Okay, And then your resistance is R. Resistance, put a little dash there. Resistance is also, um, if you had, let's it's uh, resistance is measured in ohms, O H M S. It's named for a German scientist named Gregory Ohm. So if you had, let's say, five ohms of resistance, then um, you would write that five, and then the omega symbol. I'm not an artist, but that's the general idea. It it actually kind of looks like an R, but it's supposed to be an omega symbol. Um. So you, um, that's how you measure resistance is in ohms, and that's a poorly drawn symbol for ohms, the, the omega symbol. So if you have one of the three of these, you can find the other, or excuse me, two of the three of these, you can find the other one. So let's, and I may have to use a calculator because I don't math well, but I know how to do electricity. All right, so let's say you have 120 volts, and then you have um, you don't know your amps, and then you have five ohms. Okay, now this is a really 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 high um, high powered um, device. Okay, so you have 120 amps, five ohms. Um, if you remember uh, how to do math, which I barely do, um, you divide by five here then divide by five here, okay? So you divide by five, that becomes, sorry, one. Let's back up. Like I said, I don't math very well. So um, you're, you're basically doing this equation right here. E equals I, see, I messed it up. I, e equals I times R. There we go. That's better. <clears throat> See what happens when I try to math? So you have um, 120 volts 
equals, let's erase that, equals, um, you don't know your current. Sorry, let's change that. I um, I can stand for intensity, which is your amperage. It's very um, it's the it's the intensity of the amount of um, uh, electrons moving. Sorry, I'm I'm kind of messing this up, but this is not the important part. But it leads to other parts. If you understand this, then you can, it can help you do some somewhat do troubleshooting. So um, E equals I times R equals I times R. We don't know the current, we know the voltage, and we'll call it five, all right? Um, this is five ohms, all right? So you divide by five to get the, the I by itself, divide by five, divide by five here, and I is equal to 60 amps. Okay, I'm sorry that the, let's uh, redo that. Move here a little bit. Move my controllers and stuff that I was messing with earlier out of the way. 120 equals I R, excuse, sorry, 5 ohms. And um, it, if anybody has any questions about this, Feel free to leave your questions in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. Um, this is not all that we're learning. This is not a math lesson, especially not taught by me, but um, we will move on in just a second. So you divide by five, like I said, divide by five. And then you got I is equal to 60 amps because 120 divided by five is 60. I think so, hang on, no. I'm assuming. Okay. So 120 divided by five, now that I um, use my calculator, is 24 amps. So this is known as Ohm's law. This is one of the most basic equations you can use in electricity to find things. Now, we're gonna move past that. And you're probably wondering why I wrote pi on here. Because I times E equals P, or power. So, in the previous example, we had 24 amps times 120 volts. So we multiply those two together, and we will get our wattage. Now wattage is the amount of, uh, I forget exactly what the, um, the definition of wattage is. However, if you're talking about your, um, a, a light bulb for instance, um, a light bulb, a standard incandescent light bulb, which is not fluorescent, it's not LED, it's just a um, a glass uh, a glass dome with a metal filament in it. So that's an incandescent light bulb. 120, 24, hang on. Okay. So um, this is definitely not a light bulb. So 120 times 24 equals, what the heck was it? Twenty eight eighty watts. So that's how you do um, the pi law. 
And it was, there was another scientist by the name of Watt. His last name was Watt, W-A-T-T. And um, he came up with this and proved it. And so now it's known as Watt's law. So um, if you have the wattage and you have the voltage applied to whatever you're doing, you can figure out what the current is. And if you have the voltage and the current, then you can find the resistance. So it's just a little bit of education so that you can kind of, you know, find out these uh, little things about whatever you happen to be messing with. Now, there's uh, two things to understand about the way that we use electricity in modern times. Um, there's alternating current and then there's direct current. Um, so most of my, uh, most of my community, most of my uh, subscribers are gamers. And um, we have, there are tons of things that use electricity in, in gaming, all right? But one thing that I know that everybody has is a cell phone. I have one right here, and then I have another one on my desk that I use for work. <clears throat> and they all have a charger. So let's see if we can get this to focus. All righty. So if you look on there, you have an input and then you have an output. And so there's, um, there's some numbers and stuff there that we're gonna go over in just a second here. But I wanna give you guys a real good look at this so um, you can kind of know what I'm talking about. Okay. So if you, and if you have you know one of these laying around, get it and uh, we'll look at it. You can kind of follow along with what I'm looking at. So here it says input uh, 120 to 240 V. So that's you can plug this into a 120 volt outlet, which is a standard outlet that everybody has in their house. Or you can plug it into something a little bit lower, maybe a little bit higher, and it'll still give you the desired result of charging your phone. And the input, it says uh, 50 to 60 HZ, which means Hertz, and I'll explain that in just a second, okay? And then it says um, 0.35A. So by this, um, it gives you the voltage, it gives you the frequency and it gives you the amperage that's that's consumed by plugging this thing in. And make probably the next line it says output. Okay. And it uh this one says output 5.0 V, and then it has a little symbol. Mm -hmm. And that little symbol looks something like this. Okay, and the input has a little squiggly line like that. Now, these are symbols. This is direct current. This is alternating current. All right, direct current is it's whatever the voltage is. In this case, um, it says five volts. It's five volts all the time. No questions asked. It's five volts as long as it's plugged in. <clears throat> If it's five volts here, which I don't think anything that I know of runs off or not anything um, that you could probably uh, find in common use is runs off, runs off of five volts alternating current. But this is just for this example, okay? So you have five volts, it stays at five volts. With this one, the alternating current, it goes from, um, it goes up, then down, up, down up down as long as it's plugged in so um and this little dotted line here is your direct current this is your alternating current which i just explained so so you also saw 50 to 60 hertz um on this phone charger 
And what that means is for alternating current, let me make sure that I read that right. Okay. If you look at it, it'll say 50 hertz next to the alternating current input, but it doesn't say give a frequency next to the direct current. And there's a reason for that. Because this doesn't cycle. It just is whatever the voltage is. In this case, it's 5 volts. Okay. With this, it, um, it goes, so this is 5 volts, 50 hertz, right? Okay, so whenever the cycle starts, you have uh, basically some a magnet that turns, okay? Could be more than one magnet, could be just one magnet, but you have a magnet that turns inside. There's your magnet. And then you have a big coil of wire around it. Like I said, I need an easel for this. A big coil of wire around it so this magnet turns and there's also pieces of metal that have wire wrapped around it around the outside so these pieces of metal whenever this magnet is turned um it's there's something called flux lines if you ever um put um back in like elementary school in earth science if you ever took a magnet and put the um the the metal shavings on a piece of paper over the magnet or the magnet was sitting on the table you just put the piece of paper over it and it made this fun little um round two little round shapes that's your those are called flux lines Okay. All right, so every magnet has flux lines. So this magnet has flux lines. Whenever um, this magnet spins, as it spins, these pieces of metal around here that are connected to a coil of wire, they're breaking those flux lines. And whenever those flux lines break, you create voltage. And when you have voltage, um, current will move. So voltage, it, think of it as like water pressure. Voltage is the water pressure and current is the actual like amount of water, like 30 gallons per minute, five gallons per minute, whatever the case is. So um, your current moves and your resistance doesn't real um, doesn't really change all that much, um, in the the small minutia of electrical um, engineering, that's probably not the case because of various you know Kirchhoff's law and stuff like that. But for this example, like I said, I'm not going too far into this. Um, the resistance doesn't really change because your um, this right here is actually a load. Like I said earlier with this example right here, um, this is a load and it's not going to um, change. The resistance is going to remain the same inside this. The only thing that's going to change is the voltage goes up to 120 and then outcoming voltage um, is 5. So as, as this is happening, as the, um, the north pole of the magnet hits these, it um, induce or it is a positive charge, and then as the south pole gets up to these same ones, it induces a negative charge. So as it turns, you're going from from this one point right here, you're going from zero to five, down to zero, then back to five, then back to zero, and then it's then it starts doing this number, and um, going back to the uh, the fifty hertz here. It does 50 revolutions every second. So hertz is times per second. Um, your frequency is times per second. Um, and it's measured in hertz. Another guy who is, um, who's apparently a really smart guy and got his name put on the measurement for the thing that he discovered. 
So if you, instead of this, we'll erase all this. It will look more like that. Now, obviously this isn't a scale drawing, but you get the idea. It's going up, down, and then back to zero 60 times every second. That is the gist of how um, electricity works. In the United States, we run off of a 50 to 60 hertz system, mainly 60. Um, as far as I know, it's mainly 60. Um, there are applications where um, it goes way above that, fluorescent lighting and stuff like that, but we're not gonna go, again, we're not gonna go into that. This is a very basic remedial level. But I want you guys to understand how all of this stuff works. And while we're at it, I really should have brought a rag in here with me so I can erase this thing properly. Um, the water pressure is voltage. Um, So and whenever you're thinking about electricity, this is the water analogy. It's very, very common for the water analogy to, to be used in teaching electrical theory. And that's what this is. So the water analogy, the water pressure is voltage because it's pushing the, amp, the amps through. The amount of water is your amperage. It's um, five amps could be equated to five gallons a minute in the water analogy. And that's the very, very basic concept of using the water analogy and then the if you take a hose and put a kink in it to stop the water flow that's your resistance how much you kink the hose is how much resistance you're putting on the water so that that's the water analogy for teaching electricity <clears throat> so i'm going to move my camera really quick and we'll get started with the next part of this So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to talk about a couple of tools that you can use to um, change an outlet or something like that in your house if you wanted to. The um, I have a couple of devices and I'm going to show you how to um, how to hook them up and on a very again a very basic level your your application whatever you see whenever you pull a device out of the wall or whenever you get to get ready to install it may be a little bit different but that's okay because you're going to um you're gonna after i get done you're gonna understand what each thing does and um, if you are confident enough you would be able to find out what each thing is so that you could hook it up correctly um, but before i do any of that i do have to preface this with this statement never ever 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 work on a device that is live if if you cannot turn the power off and you're not comfortable or excuse me let me rephrase that if you cannot turn the power off i personally recommend you do not work on a device that is energized um, electricity these electrons they move at the speed of light there is nothing and you know if you're by yourself i, I can't stress safety enough okay if you're by yourself and the uh, the right situation happens, then um, it 
it can and sometimes will kill people whenever they are not res- I would, whenever they don't respect what they're working on okay so if you're very new to this do not let me rephrase that i know that some people are going to work on it live i do not recommend that especially if you don't have a good understanding of what's going on it's vital that you do not work on something that's energized that's my safety statement i do not want anybody getting hurt and um i I want everybody to be safe if they decide to um do what i'm teaching here what i'm going to be teaching here in just a second so that's out of the way um we're going to talk about a couple of different tools and these are um, my personal tools. I use them for my personal uses also, um, all right, and also for work. And um, hopefully by the time that we're done here, you'll be able to um, understand them and be able to use one for yourself. So a very basic tool is a screwdriver. And um, this does not look, look like much, but this is my favorite screwdriver for normal everyday electrical work changing outlets, um, installing a circuit breaker, stuff like that, taking the panel off of your, um, uh, off of taking the cover, excuse me, the cover off of an electrical panel. Um, this will do it 99 times out of a hundred. So this is an 11 in one. So it has, excuse me, 11 different, um, things that it can, uh, turn. So, you have a 5 16 nut driver. You have a 3 8 nut driver. You have a number two um, Phillips head or um, cross head. Then you have a number one cross head. And I forget the exact measurements, but it, you have a small um, slot head right there. And then you have a little bit larger slot head right there. These are really good. It, if in some for some circuit breakers, um, that flat head is really good for tightening the screws down. Um, but this little barrel right here that they're both in, that is your quarter inch nut driver. So five sixteenths, quarter inch, and then um, two Phillips head, two flat heads. And then um, on a lot of newer uh, electrical devices, you have you have use of a square. Let's see if we can get focus. Anyway, it's a square tip um, screw. And these are the 88 cent um, receptacles from Home Depot. So I have the square tip there, goes right in and you can tighten it down like that, okay? Oops. So not only do you, you have the square tips there, you have two of them. Then you have a um, star tip right there or a torx tip, whatever you want to call it. And there you have a 3 8 nut driver. So there are 11 different tools contained in that. And so that's why this is my favorite screwdriver. Um, if you're a PC builder, I would not recommend this. I would recommend using a magnetic screwdriver. Um, just because those little tiny screws that you encounter will fit, this will fit and turn those screws. But when you're trying to reach down and you're holding something and you only got one hand, you're, you're liable to drop one of those screws down somewhere that you can't get to. I know that I can't with my big sausage fingers. So that's the 11 in one. Um, when I first got in the electrical field, there's a little bit of a joke attached to this. Um, I got in the electrical field. I met my now wife and I, um, we had gone out, um, on a Sunday or something, just goofing around. And we went to Home Depot because I needed to buy a tool for, um, uh, for work. And we came back and, uh, I was dropping her off at my girlfriend off now we'll we'll call her my wife because I'm married to her now. Anyway, so we were I was dropping her off, and her mother asked, "Hey, what what did you guys do?" 
and said, well, you know, we went, you know, uh, went to the mall and got something to eat. And I piped up and said, yeah. And then um, she let me buy a pair of strippers. And she said, a pair of what? And then I held these up, not this specific pair, but um, she didn't really understand that I was an electrician yet. But I was like, yeah, why are strippers? And you, like, you could see the look on her face. It was hilarious. But, and it was meant that way. And, you know, we, we joke about that day now. But anyway, so a little, little funny story to go along with these. Now, these will um, strip various sizes of wire. Not every size, but very common sizes of wire. And um, these screws right here, they are a very specific size. And if you have one of those that's too, if you have like a screw, a kit of uh, electrical part screws and one of those is in it and it's too long, you can put it in that one. There's a different size right there, but you can put it in that hole right there and then squeeze that and it'll actually cut the screw. And because it's threaded in there, it won't, um, you can unthread it and it fixes the threads from the cutting. But anyway, this is a very useful tool. Um, and also, if you're dealing with solid wire, which we'll get to in just a second, <clears throat> you have that right there. You put the, the solid wire in there and then turn it like that, and it'll make a little shepherd's hook like that. And um, But again, I'll explain all that in just a second. But these are wire strippers. Um, these are not the expensive ones. I think there's a store called Harbor Freight, and these are about $10 at Harbor Freight. Maybe less. I don't know. So, I mentioned earlier that I want anybody who's doing this to do it safely. I never want anybody to get hurt because if you survive, if you survive a major shock, a major electrical shock, then um, it can cause a lot of um, physical physiological damages. Like, um, you know, if you suffer a serious shock and this is i know of this happening before it will actually heat the bones up heat your bones up and it'll um start cooking everything in your arm that's actually happened to people who survived the shock and it was a long expensive process of healing and recuperation anyway i say all that to say this i want you to be safe now one of my uh favorite and simple favorite favorite simple tools is this right here. Now, um, you turn this guy on, in this case, you hold the button and, um, this is called a death stick and it's actually an anti-death stick. If you have something that runs off of alternating current, which is the one that generally hurts people, 120 volts, 240, 480, stuff like that, then this will, um, if you if you have it on it will detect the what they call the inductance field google that later it'll detect the inductance field around alternating current and if it starts beeping whenever it's on then that means that there is um there's a live wire present and if you're only touching it on one wire um then you know that that it's live and you don't need to touch it um this is also called an ncv NCVD, non-contact voltage detector. This is a very, very useful tool. Um, this one was purchased by the company that I work for. Um, there's a company called Fluke that makes one of these, and that's the one that I prefer, but beggars can't be choosers. I wasn't paying for it. Very, very useful tool. Now, if you have access to the um, to the ouchy bits or the metal the uh, energized portions of whatever device you're working on, you can use one of these. Now, these come in all kinds of shapes, sizes, and prices. Um, there are some uh, multimeter, this is called a digital multimeter. Um, multi because it does multiple functions, which we'll talk about in just a second. Um, and you can get them for, I don't know, 20 bucks, or you can spend hundreds of dollars on them. I do not recommend you do that. This is my personal one. I paid for this one. This one is uh, about $120. 
this little portion right here, you take a, a single live wire and put it in there and um, it will and turn it to the right setting and it'll tell you what the what current how much current is going through there. Remember, current amount of electrons. Tell you how much current is going through there. Then if you turn it to the V right there, it's got um, off voltage um, amperage or current. And then that's your omega symbol right there. And we'll talk about the other little, oops, wrong side. We'll talk about the other little symbol uh, right there in just a second. <clears throat> so you turn it to V and you take these two probes and let's say you're trying to test voltage of this outlet right here. All right. You could do it two ways. You can try to make sure I'm in the frame. You can st stick in there. Do not touch the metal parts. I'm just doing this because it's off. You stick it in like that. And it'll tell you what the voltage is right here. Or you could take the probes, touch one to this side and one to this side, or um, one to here and then one to that green screw, which we'll again, again, we'll talk about in a second. And that'll tell you what the voltage is. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, we'll get the, the other tools in just a second. So this is, while I got this out, this is your standard electrical 120 volt outlet, okay? There, some of these, may um, they may have a square body here instead of it being two circles. The exact, it's just a different style. It makes it pretty and stuff like that. But they're, um, on, if you take them out, you have um, a gold screw here and a, a silver screw right here and then this green screw. Now the green screw we'll talk about first. Anytime on any electrical device that I know of, if you have a green screw like that and it's connected, well, you can't really see it, but excuse me, that is connected to this right here. That is your ground. Your ground is a safety mechanism. Um, in a lot of older houses, um, this third prong, the round one down here, does not exist because the electrical code did not require houses to be grounded. And over time, gr grounding became more of a commonplace thing because of safety, and um, it stopped a lot of fires, which is what that the National Electrical Code is for. But that green screw is your ground, and should something short circuit <clears throat> then it will take the current through the ground away from um, wherever the short circuit is. It'll pop the breaker. It'll pop the circuit breaker, which is a pro another protection device, and um, let whoever um, happens to be trying to fix it fix the problem until um, so that no fires start. Because and what a short circuit is is. Um, a regular circuit is from point A, or excuse me, point A to point B, then back here to point C, and then to D, um, wherever it goes from there. So if you went, um, if you had a short circuit, the um, point B over here would be uh, your load, and so that would um, have resistance in it. But if you go from point A to point um, C, without going through the load, you lose your resistance. So you have, um, you have a very, very high current situation. The more current moves through a conductor, depending on the size, the, um, the specific number depends on the size of the conductor. But if, the, um, if there's too much going through that wire, it'll heat up and actually catch on fire. Um, again, for my PC builders, if you are familiar with the NZXT issue with their H1 case, you, then you know what I'm talking about. That was an electrical issue, and it was catching people's computers and houses on fire. So, um, as I said at the beginning of this video, um, gaming and uh, stuff like that relies heavily on electricity and it being and it going and it working correctly. So. Like I said, your short circuit goes, uh, instead of going from A to B to C, it goes from A to C 
and it has a overcurrent condition. That's the word I was trying to think of a second ago, an overcurrent. And that is where the circuit breaker should trip it off and um, stop a fire from happening. Now, um, I did mention the colors of these screws and they are very important. So if um, whenever you pull one of these out of, out of a wall, pull it out, you're gonna see different colored wires and the colors mean something very specific. If you have a bare copper wire, that's automatically your ground because if it doesn't have the insulation on it and it's just bare copper, then it's not designed to normally carry um, current. If you have a white wire, that is normally designed for your neutral if the, you're dealing with an outlet. If it's a switch, that's a, we'll talk about that in just a second. And I'm going to uh, draw a picture for you guys a little bit later. Excuse me. Sorry about that. <clears throat> so anyway, um, the, the gold screw is that's where your hot wire goes there. If there's a black or a red, normally a black or a red wire, it goes on this side. Um, your white wire goes here, your green or your bare copper goes on the green screw. That's very important. If you mix these two, two up, you can um, create a short circuit and causing the breaker to trip. Okay. So, um, you pull them out. And you, if you're changing one of these, then you make a note, what wire and go get, I mean, I encourage you, you know, this is not some, let me pull this thing down some, this is not something that makes you look, what I'm about to say, if you do, it doesn't make you look, you know, stupid or ignorant or anything like that. It makes you look smart because you're, um, keeping track of where everything goes because, some of sometimes you'll open a box, uh, um, the box in the wall, where one of these outlets is at, and there will be you know a bunch of different wires, and you don't know where they go. So um, you can go and get scotch tape if, if you have to. You can go get painters tape, masking tape, it's something put on that wire so you know where it goes. It's very important that you know where these where these wires go and what they do, so that um, you don't make a mistake. It's called, I mean, it's simply called labeling. Label the wires, please, by all means. Um, but uh, label your wires so you know whenever you, you replace one of these that you know where they go. So whenever you turn the power back on after, after you're finished, it won't trip the breaker. And you can be um, confident that you did a good job. Now, there is another thing um, about these that is, you know, it's a, it's a little advanced because I have I even haven't done a lot. And by the way, I've been in the electrical field for about 15 years. So I, I've, I've worked in industrial plants, I've wired houses, I've worked in commercial buildings, and I've even built aircraft. So I've been around the block a little bit. I'm not an expert by any stretch of the imagination, but... I do know generally what I'm talking about. So, um, if you, let's say you wanted, um, this out, this outlet right here, always on. And this outlet right here controlled by a switch, a light switch. It's like, let me, my marker's drunk. Um, there's a tab right there on both sides. If you break that tab off, you essentially now have two circuits. This can be controlled by a switch or this one, and the other one can be on all the time. It really doesn't matter. Or you can have one control, each of these controlled by a different switch. Switch one, switch two. It's real simple. Um, and I say it's simple, but, and, you know, once you draw a picture of it, then it, it's like, oh, yeah, well, you know, that kind of makes sense. So, um, Normally, one thing I forgot to mention, normally your gold screw will um, will have a black wire on it, especially in residential applications. And this is, I'm not talking about commercial buildings and stuff. This video is specifically designed for people um, working on electrical devices in their house, okay? So in normal residential applications, um, 
this will have a black uh, black uh, a wire with a black uh, coating on it. Um, and I have some over here we'll look at in a second. It has a black coating on it. So the black goes on the gold. Um, the, the nickname for petroleum, black gold. That's how you remember where, um, what goes here. And silver or white screw, the white wire goes on there. And green is obvious. So that's your basic electrical outlet. Even if you, um, like I said earlier, even if you buy the ones that this part is like a rectangle, it's still the same. It still works the same way. So that if you look on the back here, you see these tiny holes right here. There's four of them. Um, there's four holes, four screws, one for each screw. There is debate amongst electricians whether or not that's a good idea. And this is my personal take on those, on the backstabber holes. Um, you do not get as good of a connection um, with those backstabber holes as you would stripping the wire out and putting it around the screw. I personally do not like them. Because if you have to go back and redo something, they're not impossible to get out, but um, they are designed for 14 gauge wire, which is pretty small. Um, and 14 gauge wire in those easily breaks. I've broken hundreds of them trying to get the darn thing out. So what I do in my personal um, use of electrical outlets, strip the wire, put it around the screw, and um, it works much better that way. So next, uh, if you have, um, and again, these are basic devices that um, both of these were less than a dollar at, at Home Depot each. So this was 88 cents, and I think this was 78 cents or something like that. Um, you can get more advanced and more um, more expensive ones, but I bought these specifically for this example today. Um, and as you see, the switch has the two backstabber holes, just like the um, outlet does. <clears throat> now, a switch is nothing but an electrical gate. Um, and you can see, well, kind of, there we go. You can kind of see right there, it says off. Flip it up, it says on. There we go. The funny part is if you turn one of these upside down and I've worked with some very OCD people and they want things turned right side up. There's debate about that too, but um, they taught me to do it a certain way and they're like, because everybody, when they go in a room, if they want to turn the light on, they flip it up, right? If you turn the word on upside down, it says, it's really hard to see, but if you take the word on and flip it upside down, it says no. It's telling you no, you did it wrong. So turn it right, right side up and you'll be good to go. So... Like I said, this is an electrical gate and it only has three screws on it. One green screw, that's your ground, just like we talked about it on the outlet. This one has two brass gold screws. So these screw, um, you don't have a white screw because you don't have a neutral or a return path. Um, You'll hear uh, electricians talk about neutrals all the time, and that is basically um, the wire that completes the circuit opposite of the hot wire. And I will draw a picture of these put into practice um, in just a few minutes. So this is, a, this is basically a gate for electrons. If you turn the switch off, turn, hold it right side up, if you turn the switch off, and this is a good time to talk about that other symbol on the uh, multimeter, turn the switch off, the gate is open. Nobody, or the bridge is up, nobody can get across, okay? If you turn it on, the bridge is down, and um, it's, you know, traffic can flow. So,
there's that symbol right there, which is right next to the omega symbol, which is the, as we talked about, resistance. So we're gonna turn this to that. Now what this does, if you have zero resistance, this will make that sound, okay? So we're gonna turn the switch off. And um, you can't see it because the camera's not low enough, but I have touching um, one probe to each screw that's basically touching both sides of the bridge. And if I turn, if I uh, lower the bridge, it allows current to flow. Raise the bridge, lower the bridge. So that's all that this device does, but it's very important because it allows you to turn things off. And if I hit the switch with that light up there, it's gonna raise the bridge, the current can't flow, and that light's gonna turn off. And that's the, that is the very basic principle of how switch works. <clears throat> so those are the two main devices that you will encounter in residential electricity. Um, I will say that, and there are other switches, they're called three-way and four-way switches. And what that does is it allows you to control a circuit from two points. So if you have a kitchen with, with the interior entrance and then an exterior entrance going out to, let's say, your backyard or patio or something, you could have two three-way switches, one at each door, and you'll be able to control the lights from both places. And whether it's up or down doesn't matter. It matters the connections inside the switch and how it's wired. Now for three-way switches, there's 13 different ways of wiring three-way switches with whatever your device is that you're controlling. How, um, how it's wired up and how um, everything connects is up to whoever is building the circuit, running the wire and installing the devices. As long as it works and um, it doesn't cause overcurrent conditions, it doesn't really matter. But again, this is very basic. I'm not going to go into three-way switches. If you would like to learn about three-way switches, please leave, um, leave a comment down below. Let me know and I'll do a video talking about three-way switches. <clears throat> okay, uh, let's see. One more tool before we get to back to the, back to the drawing board. Um, one more tool, this right here, um, in this day and age, we use a lot of USB devices. We talked about this earlier. And um, it has, a, a, I think it's a USB B port. I can't remember. Anyway, so that's a, a USB port. I forget the specific name of it, but everybody knows what it is. And by the way, USB, in case you don't know, stands for Universal Serial Bus. It's very common to use something like that, and they're starting to modify them a little bit to make the transfer of data a lot faster because it's not just for power, it's also for data transfer. If you have a PC or um, something like that, then you are, um, or a phone charger, then you've seen a USB port. Um, this microphone right here has a newer style of, um, of USB on, it's called USB-C, it's a, it's a oval, but anyway, the point is, so for this, I ha I can take this tool right here, this is a US, what do they call it, a USB digital multimeter. If I were to plug this guy in, just like that, and then plug this in, this uh, display right here would come on, and it'll tell me the voltage and, um, the voltage and how much current is being drawn by this, okay? So it's a very useful tool. If you don't know if a USB port is working, then that guy right there will tell you. And this thing, um, when I bought it about three years ago, it was less than $20. Um, and this is made by Klein Tools. Um, 
this screwdriver right here that I um, praise so much is also made by Klein. There is one more tool that I want to talk about that's also made by Klein, but anyway, that's a USB digital multimeter. Very useful. So um, the last thing, and I, I almost don't want to talk about this tool yet, but um, if you ever see one, I want you guys to know what it is and what it's not. There are a couple of different names for this. They're called flush cuts, or there's some kind. Of, they're sometimes called flush cuts. Not really that common. They're also called called side cutters, um, Kleins, which is the company that makes makes the ones that I have. And they're also called electricians hammers, but it's these right here. Um, they are very very tough. They're made of hardened steel. You can beat the crap out of stuff with these. I do not recommend it. Um, if you're going to use these as a pair of pliers, and it also has a wire cutter in here, very very useful for cutting wire. Um, don't use these as um, as hammers, as screwdrivers, or anything like that because they're made to be pliers. Um, there are various different um, uh, styles of these. There are some right here. It will have a crimper for um, little uh, copper barrels that go over a bunch of um, ground wires that are twisted together. And you can um, put the little barrel in there and crimp it and it'll hold all those wires together. But um, anyway, it's a very useful tool. If you ever buy a pair of these, um, don't cheap out. These. Uh, pliers right here were about forty dollars. I know they're expensive, but and I know that this that is an expensive price for a pair of pliers. However, um, being that I use these for work and I've used them, I've used a pair of these almost every single day I step foot in the field. So um, they they're with these two things right here are with me all the time, and about seventy five percent of the time I have one of these with me, but. In any case, so that's all for the tools. Now, back to the uh, back to the drawing board. So. What I'm going to be drawing here <clears throat> I'm going to be um, Sorry, my wife came in. <clears throat> so what we're gonna be drawing is we're going to be drawing um, basically a circuit and it'll include a receptacle, an outlet and a switch and, some, and where you can plug something in or a device that's plugged in is a better way to put it. So here it we'll call, I, I forget the alternating current symbol for a power source, but we'll just go with this right here. Okay. All right. Got to get all my all my colors together. Don't. And being that this is a whiteboard, I'm going to use a uh, what color is this? Basically, like a purple so that you guys can um, can see where the, the neutral is going. <coughs> All right, so you got this. Sorry, my work phone just went off. Anyway, 
So you have So this is the outlet for or let me draw let me draw this actual pictures instead of just symbols. Okay. All right. And we'll do this a little bit differently. Draw it up here. There. And then So that little symbol right there, you can't hardly see it, but it looks like like that. That's your symbol for ground. Maybe I should get a darker color to do that. Okay. All right, so that's your ground, and I'll I'll bring this closer to the camera in just a second. <clears throat> Oops, that's the wrong color. Colors are very important. One thing that um I hope that you will never see is a colorblind electrician. Not that there's anything wrong with being colorblind. However, if you mess up a red and a green wire, you could cause a fire. And it can actually kill people. Okay, so. Or set this guy up. I almost forgot this. Okay, here you have a very basic cir circuit. Can't use my Steam Deck from here. Anyway, so you have a very basic circuit. Here's your power supply. There, there's your source of power, whether it be your electrical panel or whatever the case is. And then it goes up and over. This is your hot wire, okay? Your hot wire goes over to your um, outlet, and then your neutral is your return path back to the source, okay? Um, then you have your ground here. And the ground doesn't hook to um, either one of these. Um, they're, all the grounds are connected back at the power source. Um, and one ground hooking to the ground on another device and then another device it's called bonding but we won't really get in too much into that so um you have your hot wire goes to your receptacle then this right here remember i i used the bridge analogy earlier this is your switch this is this guy right here okay this is um your uh your bridge that you can um, open and close. Close allows current to flow and then open um, stops it. Um, there's your switch and then this, we'll call this a light right here and then it, it, it's grounded as well. This actually should be grounded too but I can't draw with my left hand. But in any case, this is a very basic circuit. So you have a receptacle, like I said, a switch and a light fixture. When you understand um, how these connect together, then you will, um, you can, or at least I can, um, it's just the way, by the way that I learn, I can see, okay, so um, this receptacle is on the same circuit as this light and this switch. If um, the 
if any wire joint at this receptacle fails, then there's going to be no power to this switch. And therefore, whether it's open or closed, there's going to be no power, no power to this light. And <clears throat> if I were to, um, let's see here. If there was something that went wrong in this light, and this is, this is a troubleshooting step, okay? So if something went wrong at this light, let me see if I can do this with my left hand, where this wire touched that wire, um, camera a little bit, there we go, where this wire, this hot wire touched this neutral wire, then you have a short circuit because much like water, electricity is going to follow the path of least resistance. So in this light, being an electrical load, by definition, it is res it has resistance. This wire touching this wire has zero resistance. That so your um, current is going to um, jump over the light, over and make a joint right here and go back, and create an overcurrent condition. And that is something that you don't want to do. And this can happen at any point along here. It can happen here, here, even here. Any At any point, this can happen, depending on how the wires are, are running everything. And um, it, it will create a short circuit. And here, hopefully, the circuit breaker or fuse, whichever um, one happens to be there, the circuit breaker or fuse will um, open the circuit stopping the flow of current and then somebody can come in and assess what the problem is and fix it. And so th this is a very basic circuit. Um, anytime that something like this is um, put into practice, it's just, or if there's a problem here, it's just finding, okay, what's first in the line? All right, this, this is um, the first in the line. So um, you can disconnect, if you have a short circuit, you can disconnect this switch and this light and then use your multimeter to check for a short circuit um, here. And if you find it there, if the short circuit still exists with just this connected, then you know it's not from here over. If you disconnect these two and the short circuit goes away, then you know that it's not here, it's somewhere between here and here. Or there anyways you, you get the idea so it's just note and I say all of this all of these things to to let people know how sometimes simple it can be to do electrical tr troubleshooting again never ever 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 work on a live circuit it's very very important electricity moves way too fast um, for people to play with it nonchalantly I never want anybody to get hurt because if you um, if you survive the shock, if it's severe enough and you still survive it, it will hurt for a long, long time. I want ever I want everybody to be happy and healthy and not dead. So now we're gonna talk about these wires here. So I went to um, Home Depot. I was looking for a scrap piece of wire because I didn't want to have to buy a whole roll. Thankfully, they had these um, short rolls right here for sale and I picked one of these up for this demonstration. Now, um, this is what is known as, um, it's commonly referred to as Romex. There are actually three wires in this. And Romex is more of a, a brand name, if I remember correctly. I know that, I, I mean, 
for 20 years I've been referring to this as Romex. So anyway, so um, I believe Romex is a brand name, but if somebody says, you know, I have uh, 14 gauge Romex, which is what this is, um, they're talking about um, basic residential wiring. And like I said, this has three conductors in it. There's a black, a white, and then a bare copper one in there. If somebody says that they have um, uh, 14 two, that means there's a ground and then two current carrying conductors, black and white, 14 three, there's three conductors in there and so on and so forth. Oh, I'll strip out a little bit more. And you don't necessarily have to have these scissors. Um, personally, I've never used these scissors on Romex before. I work with a lot of data cables and stuff. Like a RJ45 patch cords, your Ethernet cable, if you will. And that's what I use those for. But when you t um, peel back the outer jacket, the outer insulation, you have these three wires. And again, like I said earlier, sometimes this wire right here will be green, okay? Um, this is your hot wire, and then this is your neutral. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do, oh, let, let me back up for a second. So I said that this is 14 gauge wire, right? So 14 gauge wire basically um, refers to the out um, how thick the wire is. It gets a little bit confusing because much like um, needles and if you have gauges in your ear, um, the smaller the number, the bigger the hole or the bigger the outside diameter. So this is 14, so it's relatively small. However, um, there's multiple wires in this, but they're probably 26 gauge wire. And the, the gauges are a standard for identifying how big they are. <clears throat> Me personally, I bought this, uh, I bought 14 gauge for the purposes of this demonstration. However, I recommend in regular um, outlet light switch, stuff like that application to use 12 gauge. It's a little bit thicker. It can carry more current and there, there is a reason to it. I just recommend you use 12 gauge wire. Okay. So we're going to look at our wire stripper here. As soon as it focuses, um, can't really see it, but anyway, Oh, wait there almost I had to get a better camera. <laughs> anyway, so um, these numbers along here represent um, wire gauges. And there's a solid side and a stranded side. Um, the, the stranded is a little bit smaller, but since we have solid wire, we're going to go with that. So we have a 14 gauge wire. So we're going to use the 14 gauge hole. And strip it back. Uh, half to three quarters of an inch. And much like I said earlier, put a little hook in it like that. And what that does, and this is our white wire. So we put it on the silver screw All right, and the the way that it folds over the screw is very important, at least to me. Um, I I was taught, and it makes sense that you um, you're going to be taking turning it to the right um, to tighten it. So you make the hook go over the same way whenever you tighten it that the screw is going to turn. So whenever you turn it and tighten it down, it's actually pulling the wire more in it instead of pushing the wire out. We'll tighten this guy up. The markers are falling again. 
Okay, now, um, it's kind of hard to see, but I, I cut it pretty close. You, want, you don't want that white insulation or black insulation up under the screw. You want all copper, but it, I did get all copper up underneath the screw. Focus. There we go. A little bit better. But like I said, it was very close. Um, the, the white insulation is touching the screw, but it's not up under it. And so um, with uh, the bare copper wire, that, that's your ground wire. You don't, you don't have to strip it out because it doesn't have any insulation on it. Turn it like that, make a little hook. And for some reason, these ground screws always come tightened. Now, um, whenever you loosen them up, they, um, they will stop before they get all the way out. It helps them um, not come all the way out of the device. So now, that guy in there, And then we'll take the black wire and strip it out and do the exact same thing. And we got our little hook there and we'll take it, go to the other side because the black wire goes on the gold screw. And tighten it down. So your outlet should look something like that. And again, it was um, the wires put over the screw like that because whenever I tighten it, it's going to um, turn um, that direction. Clockwise. So you put your wire over the screw clockwise and then there's your ground and your, um, your neutral. <clears throat> so Exceptions to the rule. The exception to the rule is this right here. Like I said, you will never see a white wire, or a, excuse me, let me rephrase that. You will never see a neutral on a switch. A neutral is required whenever there, let me, <laughs> hold on. If there is just a switch with no light in it, there's some um, switches that have LED lights in them. But if there's no light in it, the, a, a switch by itself does not need a neutral. Okay? Because it is consuming no energy. All right? Now, if you have a... Um, some lights have, like I said, have little LEDs in them. They will have an extra screw that is your neutral. But this one does not because it does not have any lights in it. This is a bare bones electrical switch so you have two hot wires one is one is your line in or your feed excuse me and the other one is referred to as the switch leg the switch leg is the um the leg on the switch hence the name that goes to your device this wire right here this right angle wire that is your switch leg. This is your, your, your feed, your line in, whatever you want to call it. That's how power gets to the switch. That's your switch leg that goes to the device. Let me get rid of our short circuit here. But that's your switch leg right there. And it does not matter which one of these. It could be this way 
or it could be that way. It doesn't matter because um, as long as the bridge is down, then current can go across. It doesn't matter uh, which direction the bridge is. Okay. <clears throat> and like I said earlier, oh, never mind. I'm not going to go um, go into that. But that is how you hook up a switch. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else that I can teach you guys uh, about this because that is your basic electrical um, lesson. Um, the the part that I did at the very beginning of this video, it doesn't it doesn't matter a whole lot. Um, but it is nice to know um, how things work and why things work a certain way. If you um, study this and you get really um, creative with it, you can make a lot of different things happen. When I was in school, um, part of my training was industrial. And what we had to do is make a motor turn on, run for 30 seconds, turn off, come to a complete stop, go in reverse, run for 25 seconds, and then stop, come to a complete stop, and then um, start going again. So it, the way you manipulate electricity, um, you can do all kinds of wonderful things with it. Um, and anybody who's watching this video, if you have any questions, I encourage you to ask them. I'm not guaranteeing that I'm guaranteeing you that I can answer them because every situation is fact dependent, and you may not have enough. You know, as somebody who's not well versed in this stuff may not have all the answers or all the information that I need to answer the question. So I will do my best based on the information that you give me. And the information that you give me, I'll also use as a means to um, point you in the right direction. Um, and I, I want to reiterate again, never, ever, 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 ever work on a live circuit. A live circuit can kill you and it happens in an instant there's nothing that anybody can do um I, i'm not i'm not trying to be an alarmist i just want everybody safe if they're going to try to do this if you do not feel comfortable doing this don't do it let the professionals do it but if you want to do some um some basic things you know what heck um hook up get a piece of plywood and some electrical boxes they're a, maybe a couple of dollars a piece and some wire this is a 15 foot roll of wire and it was it was less than 30 dollars i forget exactly how much it was these are a dollar a piece the receptacles are a dollar a piece play with it get a cheap multimeter because the first multimeter you ever buy myself included you will burn it up but get some of these cheap things um put it on a piece of plywood um screw take the boxes and screw them to the plywood and then practice you know before you actually try it on something live and just like i showed you um to hook this up you can take a um, an extension cord hook it up the exact same way or um you can buy um a plug that would go into this and um, you can hook it up you know, black on gold, white on silver, and then uh, your ground on the green screw, and then um, put it together, and you can make your own extension cord. It's stuff like that you're, that you're able to do, and why I do not ever mind people, at, you know, teaching people how to do this kind of stuff. It's basic. It's pretty easy to understand if you have um, just a little bit of uh, patience to kind of get through the initial stages, and yeah. It's actually a lot of fun. It's my work, my play, my passion, and how it ties into video games, because that's what this channel is about. This channel is about gaming. Um, I play mainly retro games, and, uh, you know, like this guy right here, this is a, Super a wireless Super Nintendo controller, all right? But, you know, it runs off of electricity and electrical signals. Um, for PC building, my PC is actually up under there. Um, the power supply, knowing what, so somebody says, oh, I have a 450 watt power supply. All right, what does that mean? Well, 450 watts, we learned earlier by um, from Watts Law 
that means that you have a certain amount of um, current that it, that is going through that power supply. And um, if you want to dive further into it, you can learn about how it um, transfer or changes the alternating current to the direct current using the basics of what I um, taught here tonight. So that being said, um, I hope everybody that watched this learned something. I hope you all had a lot of fun. I know I did. I enjoy teaching this stuff. Um, I will be, I might be back tomorrow beginning it's new year's eve i might be back tomorrow maybe not but anyway i might be back tomorrow um to just play some games go back to the normal type of stuff i wanted to do this video um just to give my uh, my subscribers and future subscribers something to um something to watch out for something different and um put and put my skills to use and uh, be of value to all of you so anyway uh i hope Again, I hope you guys had fun. If you like this video, um, smash that like button. If you want to see more gaming content, then subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Until next time, work hard, play hard, game hard. But above all else, be excellent to each other.